first off, Saints minicamp day one uh, went down yesterday. Everyone was in the building, right? That was one of the conversations before it started. It is mandatory. It's not voluntary. But it comes at a time, Jake, where teams are going shorter and shorter and getting further and further away from super hard work and contact at this time of the year. But everybody showed up to the building 100% attendance. However, that doesn't mean 100% it's patient as... You know, guys are injured, right? So Taysom Hill out, still recovering. Mike Thomas out, still recovering. However, the media, you, you should call Sir David Attenborough because the media did get their eyes on Mike Thomas on a Saints practice field for the first time in over a year as he posted up in one of the end zones to uh, watch the rest of practice. Uh, Dylan Maven, Tucker Charles, and Rashid Shahid, and here's the big one, Marcus Davenport and Peyton Turner are uh, not practicing due to injury. And I don't mean to be venomous sounding there. Um, And I have a soft spot for guys who have injury problems because injury problems are weird. It's not like you're like, you know, there's a huge amount of bad luck mixed up in all of that. Like, sure, sometimes you go, oh, it's my technique or is this or that, but like a huge amount of bad luck, right? And some guys just seem to have it worse than others. But my God, dude. Marcus Davenport just cannot get out of his own way as now he's got a shoulder and a finger injury and Allen says they are aiming for a training camp return. And sometimes it's difficult as a player that that doesn't miss practice or really a player that can't miss practice. Yeah. It, it is, I don't want to say frustrating like towards that player, but sometimes it can be. Yeah, a little it, natural it, and even if you, build up. I've seen even it. if you don't. And it can it can really go both ways. I'll, I'll give you an example from, from me. So... I tore plantar fasciitis in both my feet. Now, Oof. not at the same time, but within the same season. Oof. And it felt like, if you've ever done it, you know, it feels like you're walking on just a bed of rocks. I mean, it is it is not very fun. We were playing, it was in San Diego, it rained for like half a second, and the equipment manager at the time, he panicked, and he put like the long cleats into everybody's cleats. Yeah. Well, he did that, it stopped raining, the field didn't really need that. Your foot gets caught in the ground, you hear, I mean, it just pops, and Ugh. it's this loud pop. Right before opening kickoffs, like, okay, tape it up. I don't know if you know this. Uh, fullbacks aren't exactly the most secure on the roster, even if you're yeah. the starter there. So I think it's my third year, and, like, I've, I've, I've got to play. I can't miss. I mean, I'm, they're not going to cut me. Yeah. And then th- can't miss practice. <laughs> I'm not going to not practice and not play. And so it was it was awful. It was a terrible year as far as pain. But it's like, I can't miss anything. Well, my man Gates had the same thing. Well, I mean, Gates is Gates. Gates yeah, is one yeah, of the yeah, three yeah, players yeah, on the yeah, roster that's fashion. safe. No matter what, but the training, yeah. dude, the training staff would try to use it against him. Like Hester's out there practicing and you're missing games. Like, what's going on? I was like, Tone, like, you know my deal. Like, I have to be out there. <laughs> like, I have no choice. And he was cool. He's like, No, I know, but they're trying to like pin you against me and me against you. He's like, It's just not the right way. I'm like, Look, <laughs> that is not me trying to do that because Gates, like, look, I can't run. I can't do the things yeah. that I normally do. And I'm like, I understand that tone, but like I have to be out there. So like sometimes like you have like injury situations like that where you're you're maybe not holding it against your teammate, but it's like you have to understand every situation is going to be different. Well, and even now it's 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 made a bit more odd by the fact that like I said, I mean there's a huge piece on the athletic today. It's pretty interesting about how NFL teams are cutting these things short. Like Kyle Shanahan has never hit the 12 practices that he's allotted. Uh, I, I, I want to say that Mike McDaniel just stopped early as well. Yeah, we Even never the got Steelers to the just stopped early. Okay, that's what I'm saying, right? So teams yeah. are cutting this shorter and shorter. And so, yeah, at this time of year, you're going to err on the side of caution. And so it's no great deal that Davenport is still out, but it just, just seems like he's just never been 100% healthy. He's just, and I know you could say, well, no football player is, but I mean like even beyond that, like a literal on the injury list, never 100% healthy. And now it didn't even sound overly positive to me that he'd be ready by training games and aiming for training camp. Um, Peyton Turner also had off-season shoulder surgery. And, well, I don't know if Dan had surgery, excuse me, so I shouldn't say also there. He's dealing with a shoulder injury. Peyton Turner had shoulder surgery. He will be back by the time the camp When Dan has been on the field the last couple of years, he's been a menace. Yes. I mean, he has been a strong NFL starter. Yeah. They, so, like, with him, even though he has the history of injuries, like, in the locker room, I can promise you it feels a little bit different. Like when you have when you have a rookie in, in Turner that he's never really played, he's always been hurt. First round pick. I can tell you that that starts to get a little hairy. Yeah. It starts to get like the vets and certainly the ones that aren't making as much money, the 
the ones that are out there grinding, kind of in that I'm the 49th, 50, 51st, 52nd, 53rd man on the yeah. roster type situation, and you're out there busting your you know what, and like you see the first round pick, even if he's like the best teammate, even if he's the hardest worker in the world, there's some Big resentment. Star Wars fan. There's some resentment that starts to get up okay, there. It's like, okay, I, I need you. Much. I need you to do a little bit more. I need you to get on the field. We need you to help this team. You were selected in this position because we felt like you could take us to the next level. We're in a window because I, I still fully believe the Saints are in a window where they can go win. They're in a something playoff of, window, I would say. Which you know, play what's that, not that, that far that away is, from that. That's Super not Bowl easy. Window. That yeah, is yeah, not exactly, easy to do. Exactly. If you're we, in the playoffs, you can. I make mean, we could have ten NFL guys that play for LSU come in here, and I, you know, there's probably six of them that never got a chance to play in the postseason. Yeah, it's just very difficult to get there. So you'll start to have some resentment, even if you don't want it to. It just organically will start to happen. So more than Davenport, because Davenport's at least shown it on the field at times. I know mm -hmm. he hasn't been the most consistent guy out there. They need to see something from Peyton Turner this year. It's a big year for him, especially when the rest of the rookie class is giving the Saints valuable snaps out there. Yeah. Like when you look at uh, Paulson Adebo, when you look at Warner, when you look at some of the other guys – in that draft, they're out there starters contributing, and then Mark Rose you haven't been able to get healthy. Yeah, and so we'll continue to monitor those situations, both those guys, uh, huge from the Saints, not just from an investment standpoint, um, but from like, you know, we like like you said, Marcus Davenport's been a menace. I guess you can't say that yet as much about Peyton Turner, but uh, those guys remaining out for now. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing them during camp. Um, David Johnson was on the field, boys. And Dennis Allen went on to say that he doesn't see much of a difference in Johnson's ability the past few years and now, and that he says he's uh, excited to see what he can bring to the team. So not like a automatic he's making the team, but it does look like he has signed some sort of deal. And is this uh, is this OTAs or this is mini camp? Mini -camp. This is okay, mandatory so, mini camp. So mini camp is a different situation than OTAs. Mini camp, you can actually come in. Now I don't know if this is his case. In many camp, you can actually come in without a contract. Oh, then he may be on a tryout. So you can, it's not even it's not even necessarily a tryout. It's just like, hey, you're going to come to camp. We're going to get a look at you, and you sign like a, a three day waiver. Okay, that, I, I think then because because uh, that's what on I did. On football, Nick Underhill did pin it as a tryout. For I, him and that's what Columbus. I so I signed the, the three day waiver in mini camp and then got offered the contract after that. And so it's just like, hey, basically, if I get hurt. Uh, the Saints aren't responsible. It's an insurance matter at that point. It did sound like Dennis Allen would be planning on offering Johnson based on how he was talking, right? Basically saying that we're excited to see what he can bring and saying that it doesn't necessarily have to do with anything that could potentially happen with AK. Uh, the other big news today is that AK looked very good. Uh, Trevor Penning is not penciled in as LT1. He's going to have to beat out James Hurst, which is going to be tough. And then, uh, you know, we talking about we talking about that Jameis juice. As uh, Jameis Winston and Juice seem to have a natural rapport on the field, um, Jarvis Landry continues to make plays all over the place. Had another great one-handed catch yesterday. Uh, that granted was against air, but then had the play of the day climbing over. Uh, I can't remember one of the DBs catch along the sideline. Here's what Winston had to say about Jarvis Landry: "Quote, that's one thing about having a veteran guy with great savvy. He's just a baller who knows how to get open, and I really admire that so much about him." There's a part of that uh, where that's the receiver job. Hey, get open. No matter how detailed the rat is, no matter how specific this coverage, you find a way to get open, you get the ball. So uh, these two that I think could have a huge impact this year already developing that chemistry here in the offseason. I think it helps to push Olave and, and, and Mike Thomas and everybody else in that receiver room that could end up being one of the best in the league. Think about where Jameis is right now currently with the Saints to where he was last year when he was playing really well yeah. as far as when he looks up, he breaks the huddle, what he has available, and the trust Night that day. he can have. The trust that he can have in not only Michael Thomas, who has been a player of the year before, not only in, you know, AK, when he, whenever, you know, whatever that situation is, he knows he can trust him, but also like in Jarvis Landry. Yeah. Like he, everyone's seen him go to Pro Bowl after Pro Bowl and, and to be a really big-time player, to have records in the NFL as far as like, most catches in his first four years, all those things. And again, no disrespect to Mario's guy, but like last year you're breaking the huddle and you're just not seeing that. Like you're wondering, will he do this? Can he do this? Now it's like, I know he can. Let me put him in a position to succeed. And I know that if I do my job, he's going to do his job. Yeah. And as a quarterback, that, that's all you can really ask for because 
so many times for a quarterback, a lot of things that people don't even realize that trust goes so far. So if you're if you're in gun, and you've got uh, double a gap mugs, and you know the back's got to pick one of those guys up, and you got a back next to you that you really don't trust, you're like this guy's falling asleep in meetings. I don't really know his technique's going to be good. What are you going to do? You're going to alter what you're supposed to be doing. Your drop's going to be different because yeah. you don't trust the guy next to you. You don't yeah. know if he can pick it up. Now, if you've got Darren Sproles next to you, and you know he's never missed a pass pro in his life. Huh. You're going to have the same drop that you always have. Your reads are going to stay the same, and you're going to read off of that blitz, not be scared of yeah. that blitz. And so that goes the same way with receivers, with tight ends, with backs in the passing game as well. You know if you get up there, it's quarter, quarter, halves, and you know that there's going to be a route based off that coverage. Well, with a young player or with a player that doesn't have that much experience, you're going to wonder, is he going to be able to do this? With Juice, with Mike Thomas, you don't have that worry. So just – Imagine the confidence that Jameis is going to be able to have this year that he probably, even if he thought he did, didn't have a year ago. Yeah, and I mean, it's just it's basically everything you just said is basically what that quote even says, where like sometimes, even if it's maybe not the ideal cover, Jarvis Landry is someone who just has the ability to separate, uh, whether he's in uh, a great position to succeed or one where maybe the odds are against him a bit and in, in, in who's covering him, so... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how much this continues to uh, translate as minicamp goes on. Continue to bring the minicamp reports to you. Coming up next, we got some LSU baseball. Real quick news as uh, somebody has transferred out. And then we'll talk about some LSU football transfers that have come in to kind of set up Brian Polian here in about 13 minutes. So keep it locked right here on Off the Bench.